Hello everyone and welcome back to the Velocity Channel where this is your bridge to financial freedom. Listen, we've got a power pack one in here today. It's going to be like a fire hose with the information just coming at you. But listen, you know what you can do? You can slow this down, right? You can rewind it and you can use this in your life. You can actually use it right now after you watch this full video. So before we continue, we want to show you, right, how this one payment actually equals more than one payment. It can actually equal two, three, four payments, all right? But who that payment goes to is all about you. Man, I can't wait to jump into this right now. And before we do that, though, please like, share, and subscribe so that people all over the world can know and learn about Velocity Banking and implement it right after this video. All right, folks. You and I both know that lenders are out to make money. Those that understand interest earn it and those that don't pay it. And so I just want to break down very shortly here, just in case you guys haven't caught that one video that I did yesterday on how one payment can equal like one mortgage payment equals actually two mortgage payments or two payments. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to break it down right now. So let's say the age old $200,000 principal, right? At 6%, uh, it's actually going to equal closer to $1,199.10. But for the sake of math, easy math, I rounded it up to $1,200 a month. Of course, this is going to depend on the lender. $1,200 each month that you're paying on that house payment. Do you know how it's divided up? It's divided up kind of like this, okay? $1,100, is it going to principal? No, no, $1,100 is not going to principal. $1,100 is going to interest, okay? $1,100 is gonna go to interest and the principal $100 is going to the principal. Look it up. Look at your amortization table. Now, I know this may differ slightly, but look at how it's divided. You'll get mad, mad enough to do something about it. So where does the $1,100 go is my next question. Where does that $1,100 go? It goes to your lender is where it goes to, okay? Now, when the $1,100 hits the lender, okay, where does that $1,100 go? it goes to his payment or it goes to their rental. I know uh, a real estate attorney and many wealthy people do this. Uh, they actually have mortgages, but other people pay them, right? Known as rentals. And they are in a rental. So that's where they live, okay? And it makes very good sense. It all depends on your goals. But this is how the money is divided up. And I wanna draw your attention to where this money is divided, okay? Principal and interest. The interest goes to the lender. Now I wanna show you how you can make this same concept work for you, of course, with your line of credit. But even if you don't have a line of credit, we're gonna show you how to make this concept work for you. Watch this. So we have here a couple of places we could go with our credit card, right? We know how powerful the credit cards are, all right? We know how powerful $500 is when it's used anywhere, actually. It's powerful for others or it could be powerful for us. If we spend $500 each month on consumables, maybe, you know, food, right? Something we call a necessity, perhaps uh, even J's, you know? I mean, you name it, purses. Come on, there's nothing wrong with that. But each month, right, we spend on those consumables. It's taking away from what we could be spending and making on ourselves, okay? So basically, consumables equals trash at the end of the day, meaning it's not making us or generating us any income, not revenue. I'm talking about income, what we get, all right? Now, contrast that with taking your credit card which is what it's supposed to be used for. Watch this. Your credit card is supposed to be used for assets, right, each month that will be generating you income. Now, what's the big deal, right? Well, come on, what's the big reveal? Well, 
that asset could be real estate, which is my favorite. Uh, it could be stocks. Uh, it could be, uh, you name it, even crypto, when you know what you're doing. Because at the end of the day, there is no bad investment, just uninformed investors. Because investors of all types are making money on all types of investments, okay? Especially when it's structured correctly, right? And they are using their credit cards. They are using their purchasing power. They are using the cash that they have to create even more. But it's all about this decision. Am I going to use it on a consumable or am I going to use it on an asset? So my uh, admonition and encouragement to you would be to utilize the credit card on assets. Can you use it for the expenses? Absolutely. But up until this point, I've only pointed right to using it on you know, expenses. What about using the credit card? What about using your line of credit? What about using your money for assets? And I'm going to show you how you can turn and triple this income right now. So now we're moving into stage three. We're moving into the nitty gritty of how we can make the card work for us, man. This card, can you believe that people are trying to do plastectomies on their credit cards, right? Listen, you never cut up your leverage. No smart business person does that. Never cut up your leverage. You can utilize these cards as leverage, and that's what we want to do. We want to use it to get into education. We want to use it to get into uh, our business, right, which is the number one tax strategy in America. We want to use it to get into maybe the stock market, right, maybe into crypto. Absolutely. Listen, folks, we know who we're talking about. So when you see people that, Hey, you know, I only got in uh, on CJ's team for a dollar, right? Or for 149. That's called return on investment because some of them are making $1,500, up to $1,500 on our team, right? But listen, I want you to take the concept from this. Use your card, right, on assets because when you do that, you've placed it in a totally different category than expenses, or destructive expenses. It's not destructive, right? It's productive, meaning it's making you money, right? And your goal is cash flow, isn't it? Your goal is to not retire in 30 years, is to not retire in 40 years, right? Along with your mortgage. Why do you wanna retire when your mortgage retires? I'm gonna retire way before that, right? Right, we're retired right now. Seven years, maybe you can make that as a mark, or five years. Let me help you do that, okay? So up until this point, never said use your credit card as an asset. We are going to make sure we push that from this moment forward because I want the best for you. This is the groundbreaking strategy that is going to rip apart this banking system and make it work for you finally. It's called leverage banking and I can't wait to get into more with you. If you have any questions, let me know. We got your back. Go ahead and click on that link above that you see maybe here or there and schedule a call with me. With me. God bless you and guys, we'll see you later.